taxing coal, oil, and gas in En-ROADS. Think of this as an alternative to carbon pricing or to a clean electricity standard, one that allows you to just say, I'm gonna make coal, oil, and gas, or all three of them, more expensive to see what kind of impact that will have on temperature and the climate, but also equity considerations. All right, let's check it out in En-ROADS. We implement these policies of taxes or subsidies, actually, you can move it both directions. Here, in the simplest version, it just say highly taxed or very highly taxed. Underneath, though, it's very specific dollars per ton coal equivalent is what you're changing. With oil, it's barrels of oil equivalent that you can change to put in the tax. With natural gas, it's 1,000 cubic feet of coal that you're putting in as a tax. There are other possible changes that one can make. Well, one can always subsidize coal. You can imagine more and watch the temperature go up. And one note about this is that the current subsidies of coal, oil, and gas are included in the status quo setting. So if you were to subsidize it, you would be adding a subsidy on top of the existing subsidies in the industry. If you want to remove subsidies, you would think of that as actually in En-ROADS, think of it as a tax. Some of the other features, one can stop building new coal infrastructure. No new coal-fired power plants get built. The old ones retire away slowly. You can see the effect in the brown wedge shrinking over time. One can also supplement that. If you want to keep more fossil fuels in the ground, you can cut coal utilization. That would be not using the existing plants that are out there. Watch the brown area shrink. So we'll watch it even more specifically in coal. Here's where it was before with the, just the cutting investment, but you can cut utilization in any year and imagine what if we had a significant drop of keeping coal in the ground. One can alternatively imagine faster retirement. Right now, the average lifetime of a coal-fired power plant is 30 years. What if that's increased? What if the retirement rate is increased? The lifespan of a coal plant is decreased. There would be less coal around the world. Now let's think more about the behavior, about the dynamics. We'll look again at coal. It is quite effective to tax coal in the model. One of the big reasons is the timing. It affects coal demand immediately, as opposed to some of the other solutions modeled here that take a long time because you're waiting for old capacity to get retired away. This was going to affect utilization of coal immediately, getting temperature, excuse me, emissions to come down and affecting temperature fairly quickly. Watch what happens here. We're going to stop building coal infrastructure, and that does a lot of good things to emissions and to temperature. As you can imagine, it shifts a good bit of demand over to renewables. So instead of the black line, we get this blue line. We have an increase in renewable energy relative to what it would have been otherwise. However, because of what we call the squeeze the balloon problem, we solve the coal problem in one area. But let's go look at what happens with natural gas. There's still energy demand. Where is it going to go? It's going to go toward natural gas, at least to some degree, to another fossil fuel that has a lower carbon density but still uh, is producing carbon dioxide. So you get a little bit of compensating feedback here in this scenario. Squeezing the balloon by fixing coal, but by creating a new problem with a boost to overall natural gas. Overall, taxing coal, oil, and gas, it is a uh, alternative to carbon pricing, to a clean electricity standard, can make a big difference because it keeps coal, oil, and gas in the ground in the near term, cuts out some emissions, and could contribute to a suite of policies that altogether 
get us much closer to two degrees. Hope this was helpful. Go get them.